Hey, how's it going, you fiends? I'm Demi Bobemi. And I'm Dead Inside. And welcome back to another episode of Aragon. <laughs> Shit, dude. Shit. Did you forget what book we were reading? No. <laughs> Give us a recap. <laughs> um, last time, we went to... Um, Disneyland. <laughs> The, uh, what was it called? Tronchim? Yeah, Tronchim. Um, is the city... Farthendur. Farthendur. It's made of jewels. It's in a mountain. Volcano. Um, and then we met Ajihad, and he said... Wow, that's a really interesting story, Aragon. Thank you for telling me every single detail without wow, any, so- <laughs> any that's sort really of hard word to rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> um, without any sort of discretion. Oh, that's what I was trying to say. Thanks for just telling me all this information. Now I know all your secrets. Excellent recap, Demi Bobemi. As always, thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Let's just jump right into it. Let's just jump right into it. <clears throat> I'm very tired today. Seamsies. We're tired. Welcome to the tired cast where we're dead inside. Chapter 53. There's only like 59 chapters, right? I think so. Like we're almost done with this book. We probably have like what, 100 pages There's only 59 chapters. Yeah, no, not even. 77. 77 pages left, everybody. All right, sorry, let's stop (laughs) postponing and just get to it. Bless the child, Argit Lamb. Or get what? Argit Lamb. A-R-G-E-T-L-A-M. Argit Lamb, I think, stands for Shining Palm. Oh, okay. I thought you were, like, insulting me. It's an ancient language. Yeah, Silver Hand is what it stands for. Because it's... Mm Mm-mm. Because he wears silver gloves. I'm gonna puke. No, it's because of his Gedway Ignatia. Aragon stretched in the hall. He was stiff from sitting so long. <laughs> what? Why is this kid's body always hard? <laughs> like, hard, hard, stiff, rigid. I just, I'm not really into it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Behind him. The twins entered Ajahad's study and closed the door. Aragon looked at Oric. I'm sorry that you're in trouble because of me, he apologized. Don't bother yourself, grunted Oric, tugging on his beard. Ajahad gave me what I wanted. Even Saphira was startled by the statement. What do you mean, said Aragon. You can't train or fight, and you're stuck guarding me. How can that be what you wanted? The dwarf eyed him quietly. Because, Aragon, you're a strong young lad. I wanted to guard you. <laughs> you what? No. Obviously, I wasn't even looking at the book. Oh. <laughs> I, I was trying to, like, make it more obvious that I'm not reading, that I'm, like, ad-libbing. Oh. By I'm... not even looking. Maybe I need to, like, close it and be like, because, Aragon. <laughs> I just assumed that you, like, remembered the line. Memorize a book. Dude, I don't know. You this is actually just a bunch of blank pages, guys. I just... <laughs> I mean, you... Look, me- just a bunch of blank pages. I hey, just read this for... In my defense, you memorized Harry Potter. You knew, like, every chapter. It was weird. Oh, yeah, that is weird. I'm weird. <laughs> the dwarf eyed him quietly. Ajahad is a good leader. He understands how to keep the law, yet remain just. I've been punished by his command, but I'm also one of Horthgar's subjects. Under his rule, I'm free to do what I wish. Aragon realized it would be unwise to forget Oryx's dual loyalty and the split nature of power within Tronchim. Ajahad displaced you in a powerful position, didn't he? Oryx chuckled deeply. That he did, my boy! <laughs> and in such a way, the twins can't complain about it. This'll irritate them for sure. Ajahad's a tricky one, he is. Come, lad, I'm sure you're hungry, and we have to get your dragon settled in. Saphira hissed. Aragon said, her name is Saphira. Oryk made a small bow to her. My apologies. I'll be sure to remember that. He took an orange lamp from the wall and led them down the hallway. Can others in Farthendor use magic? Asked Aragon, struggling to keep up with the dwarf's brisk pace. He cradled Zerok carefully, concealing the symbol in the sheath with his arm. 
He's struggling to keep up with the dwarf. He uh, must be fucking booking it. He's hauling ass down that hallway. I just imagine like, like when you're playing WoW. God, we've been bringing up WoW a lot lately. <laughs> must be on our mind. I miss it. But you know, like when you're like walking on a gnome and you're like just scooting along, you're just like <laughs> power walking. But then when you like hop on a tour and you're like, because everybody just like walks the same speed. That's what I imagine him to be walking like, just like. But then also like, Aragon should be in pretty good shape. He's just traversed almost all of Allegasia. Like you would think that eventually your cardio would be. Maybe he's just tired, or maybe fucking uh, Oryx cardio is better. Ooh. Ooh. Oof. He's got them strong, muscly arms. We know about that. Ooh. <laughs> Few enough, said Oric, with a swift shrug under his mail. And the ones we have can't do much more than heal bruises. They've all had to tend to Arya because of the strength needed to heal her. Except for the twins. Oh, grumbled Oric. Oi is like O-E-I. <laughs> Guessing it's like, oi. Oi, ve. <laughs> Oh, fuck! Oi just means yes or affirmative. Affirmative. <laughs> affirmative. Except for the twins. Affirmative, grumbled Oric. <laughs> she wouldn't want their help anyway. Their arts are not for healing. Their talents lie in scheming and plotting for power. To everyone else's detriment. Daynor, Najahad's predecessor, allowed them to join the Varden because he needed their support. You can't oppose the Empire without spellcasters who can hold their own on the field of battle. They're a nasty pair, but they do have their uses. They entered one of the four main tunnels that divided Tronchim. Clusters of dwarves and humans strolled through it, voices echoing loudly off the polished floor. The conversation stopped abruptly as they saw Saphira, scores of eyes fixed on her. I have or a question. Or a theory, maybe. Hmm. Are the twins even twins, or are they the same person and it's like a clone? Are they even real? I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Oric ignored the spectators and turned left, heading toward one of Tronchim's distant gates. Where are we going? asked Aragon. Out of these halls, so Saphira can fly to the dragonhold above Is Isidar Mithrium, the Star Rose. The dragonhold doesn't have a roof. Tronchim's peak is open to the sky, like that of Farthendor. So she, that is you, Saphira, will be able to glide straight down into the hold. It is where the riders used to stay when they visited Tronchim. Won't it be cold and damp without a roof? asked Aragon. Nay, Oryx shook his head. Varthendor protects us from the elements. Neither rain nor snow intrude here. Beside, the hold's, the hold's halls are lined with marble caves for dragons. They provide all the shelter necessary. All you fear are the icicles. When they fall, they've been known to cleave a horse in two. I will be fine, assured Saphira. A marble cave is safer than any of the other places we've stayed. Perhaps. Do you think Murtog will be all right? Ajahad strikes me as an honorable man. Unless Murtog tries to escape, I doubt he will be harmed. Aragon crossed his arms, unwilling to talk further. He was dazed by this change in circumstances from the day before. Their mad race from Gilead was finally over, but his body expected, expected to continue running and riding. Where are our horses? <laughs> in the stables by the gate. We can visit them before leaving Tronchim. They exited Tronchim through the same gate they had entered. The gold griffins gleamed with colored highlights garnered from scores of lanterns. The sun had moved during Aragon's talk with Ajahad. Light no longer entered Farthendor, the crater, or through the crater opening. Without those moated rays, the inside of the hollow remit boop boop boop. The inside of the hollow mountain was velvety black. The only illumination came from Tronchim, which sparkled brilliantly in the gloom. The city mountains. Radiance was enough to brighten the ground hundreds of feet away. Oryk pointed at Tronchim's white pinnacle. Fresh meat and pure mountain water await you up there, he told Saphira. You may stay in any of the caves. Once you make your choice, bedding will be laid down in it, and then no one will disturb you. I thought we were going to go together. I don't want to be separated, protested Aragon. Oryk turned to him. Rider Aragon, I will do everything to accommodate you, but it would be best if Saphira waits in the dragon hold while you eat. The tunnels to the banquet halls aren't large enough for her to accompany us. But why can't you just bring me food in the hold? Because, said Oryk with a guarded expression, the food is prepared down here, and it is a long way to the top. If you wish, 
A servant could be sent up to the hold with a meal for you. It will take some time, but you could eat with Saphira then. He actually means it, Aragon thought, astonished that they would do so much for him. But the way Oryx said it made, me, made him wonder if the dwarf was testing him somehow. I'm wa wary, said Saphira, and this dragon hold sounds to my liking. Go, have your meal, then come to me. Take, don't bother. <laughs> it will be soothing to rest together without fear of wild animals or soldiers. We have suffered the hardships of the trail too long. Aragon looked at her thoughtfully, then said to Oryx, I'll eat down here. The dwarf smiled. Seemed satisfied, or seeming satisfied. I just imagine him, like, because dwarves are tiny, mm -hmm. and, like, he's bearded, to, like, when he smiled, just go. <laughs> or, like, so adorable. Or, like, that, uh, that, like, toothy smile that you see through beards where all you see is teeth, so it's just like. <laughs> <clears throat> Aragon unstrapped Saphira's saddle so she could lie down without discomfort. Would you take Zarok with you? Yes, she said. Gathering up the sword and saddle with her claws, but keep your bow. We must trust these people, though not to the point of foolishness. I know, he said, disquieted. With an explosive leap, Saphira swept off the ground and into the still air. Does he know? The steady whoosh of... He, apparently. He said, I know. He's a liar. The steady whoosh... He lied to himself in his own mind, to Saphira. He doesn't get it. The steady whoosh of her wings was the only sound in the darkness. As she disappeared over the rim of Tronchim's peak, Oryk let out a long breath. Ah, boy, you have been blessed indeed. I find a sudden longing in my heart for open skies and soaring cliffs and the thrill of hunting like a hawk. Still, my feet are better on the ground, preferably under it. He clapped his hands loudly. <laughs> I neglect my duties as host. I know you've not dined since that pitiful dinner the twins saw fit to give you. So come, let's find the cooks and beg meat and bread from them. Aragon followed the dwarf back into Tronchim and through a labyrinth of corridors until they came to a long room filled with rows of stone tables only high enough for dwarves. Fire blazed in soapstone ovens behind a long counter. Oryk, why do they call it soapstone? I actually don't know. Oryk spoke words in an unfamiliar language to a stout, ruddy dwarf. We got a song to get the part. That's my interpretation of dwarf language. Who promptly handed them stone platters piled with steaming mushrooms and fish. Then Orc took Aragon up several flights of stairs into a small alcove carved out of Tronchim's outer wall, where they sat cross-legged. Aragon wordlessly reached for his food. When their platters were empty, Orc sighed with contentment and pulled out a long-stemmed pipe. He lit it, saying, A worthy repast, though it needed a good draught of mead to wash it down properly. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Retweet, motherfucker. <laughs> Aragon surveyed the ground below. Do you farm in Farthendur? No. There's only enough sunlight for moss, mushrooms, and mold. Tronchim cannot survive without supplies from the surrounding valleys, which is one reason why many of us choose to live elsewhere in the Bjor Mountains. Then there are other dwarf cities? Not as many as we would like, and Tronchim is the greatest of them. Leaning on an elbow, Oryk took a deep pull on his pipe. You have only seen the lower levels, so it hasn't been apparent. But most of Tronchim is deserted. The farther up you go, the emptier it gets. Entire floors have remained untouched for centuries. Most doors prefer to dwell under Tronchim and Farthendur, in the caverns and passageways that riddle the rock. Through the centuries, we have tunneled extensively under the Bjor Mountains. It is, possible to, it is possible to walk from one end of the mountain range to the other without ever setting foot on the surface. It seems like a waste to have all that unused space in Tronchim, commented Aragon. Oryk nodded. Some have argued for abandoning this place because of its drain on resources, but Tronchim does perform one invaluable task. What's that? In times of misfortune, it can house our entire nation. There have only been three instances in history where we have been forced to that extreme, but each time it has saved us from certain and utter destruction. That is why we always keep it garrisoned, ready for use. I've never seen anything as magnificent, admitted Aragon. Oryx smiled around his pipe. I'm glad you find it so. It took generations to build Tronchim, and our lives are much longer than those of men. Unfortunately, because of the cursed empire, few outsiders are allowed to see its glory. How many Varden are here? Dwarves or humans? Humans. I want to know how many have fled the empire. Oryx exhaled a long puff of smoke that coiled lazily around his head. There are about 4,000 of your kin here. 
but that's a poor indicator of what you want to know. Only people who wish to fight come here. The rest of them are under King Orin's protection in Serta. So few, thought Aragon with a sinking feeling. The royal army alone numbered nearly 16,000 and was fully marshaled, not counting the Urgles. Why doesn't Orin fight the Empire himself, he asked. If he were to show open hostility, said Oric, Galbatorix would crush him. As it is, Galbatorix withholds that destruction because he considers Serta a minor threat, which is a mistake. It's through Orin's assistance that the Varden have most of their weapons and supplies. Without him, there would be no resisting the Empire. Don't despair over the number of humans in Tronchim. There are many dwarves here, many more than you have seen, and all will fight when the time comes. Orin has also promised us troops for when we battle Gabatorix. The elves pledge their help as well. Aragon absently touched Saphira's mind and found her busy eating a bloody haunch of gusto. He noticed once more the hammer and stars engraved on Oryx's helm. What does that mean? I saw it on the floor in Tronchim. Oryx lifted the iron-bound cap off his head and brushed a rough finger over the engraving. It is a symbol of my clan. We are the Ingetium, metal workers and master smiths. The hammer and stars are inlaid into Tronchim's floor because it was a personal crest of Corgan, our founder. One clan to rule, with twelve surrounding. King Hrothgar is Durgrimst in Getum, as well, and has brought my house much glory, much honor. When they returned the platters to the cook, they passed a dwarf in the hall. He stopped before Aragon bowed and said respectfully, Argetlam. So, I mean, just so you can, like, see it with your eyes. That's Durgrimst in Getum. Mm -hmm. And then he just said, uh, and get them down there. Okay. Because you probably have no idea what the fuck I was no, saying. No, it just was awful. Different language. Oof. Ooh. The dwarf left Aragon fumbling for an answer. Flushed with unease, yet also strangely ple pleased with the gesture. No one had bowed to him before. What did he say? He asked, leaning closer to Oric. Oric shrugged, embarrassed. It's an elven word that was used to refer to the riders. It means silver hand. Aragon glanced at his gloved hand, thinking of the Gedway Ignasia that whitened his palm. Do you wish to return to Saphira? Is there somewhere I could bathe first? I haven't been able to wash off the grime of the road for a long time. Also, my shirt is bloodstained and torn, and it stinks. I'd like, a, I'd like to replace it, but I don't have any money to buy a new one. Is there a way I could work for one? Do you seek to insult Horthgar's hospitality, Aragon? What? Demanded Oric. As long as you are in Tronchim, you won't have to buy a thing. You'll pay for it in other ways. Ajahad and Hrothgar will see to that. Come, I'll show you where to wash, then fetch you a shirt. He took Aragon down a long staircase until they were well below Tronchim. The corridors were tunnels now, which cramped Aragon because they were only five feet high, and all the lanterns were red. So the light doesn't blind you when you leave or enter a dark cavern, explained Oric. Five feet high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like five feet high. Yeah, but even that would be too short for you. You'd have to like kind of yeah. hunch down a little bit. Like I would just be like, "Well, this fucking sucks." You'd be like doubled over. Like you'd have to be like crunched down so far. Doubled over. I'm at ten feet tall. To me, it looks like you are. Wow. Force thanks. perspective. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. They entered a bare room with a small door on the far side. Oric pointed. The pools are rut or the pools are through there, along with brushes and soap. Leave your clothes here. I'll have new ones waiting when you get out. Aragon thanked him and started to undress. It felt oppressive being alone underground, especially with the low rock ceiling. He stripped quickly and cold. Or he stripped he stripped quickly and cold, hurried through the door into total darkness. He inched forward until his foot touched warm water, then eased himself into it. The pool was mildly salty, but soothing and calm. For a moment, he was afraid of drifting away from the door into deeper water, but as he waded forward, he discovered the water reached only to his waist. He groped over a slippery wall until he found the soap and brushes, then scrubbed himself. Afterward, he floated with his eyes closed, enjoying the warmth. When he emerged dripping into the lighted room, he found a towel, a fine linen shirt, and a pair of breeches. The clothes fit him reasonably well. Satisfied, he went out into the tunnel. Oric was waiting for him, pipe in hand. They climbed the stairs back up into Tronchim, then exited the city mountain. Aragon gazed at Tronchim's peak and called Sephira with his mind. As she flew down from the dragonhold, he asked, How do you communicate with people at the top of Tronchim? Oric chuckled. 
That's a problem we solved long ago. You didn't notice, but behind the open arches that line each level is a single, unbroken staircase that spirals around the wall of Tronchim's central chamber. The stairs climb all the way to the dragon hold above Irsadar Mithram. Oof. We call it Volturin, the Endless Staircase. Running up or down it isn't swift enough for an emergency, nor convenient enough for casual use. Instead, we use flashing lanterns to con- convey messages. <coughs> there is another way, too, though it is seldom used. When to- Volturin was constructed, a polished trough was cut next to it. The trough a- acts as a giant slide as high as a mountain. Aragon's lips twitched with a smile. Is it dangerous? A slide? Yeah. Do not think of trying it. The slide was built for dwarves and is too narrow for a man. If you slipped out of it, you could be thrown into the stairs and against the arches, perhaps even into empty space. Saphira landed, a spear's throw away, her scales rustling dryly. As she greeted Aragon, humans and dwarves trickled out of Tronchim, gathering around her with murmurs of interest. Aragon regarded the growing crowd uneasily. You'd better go, said Oric, pushing him forward. Meet me by this gate tomorrow morning. I'll be waiting. Aragon balked. How will I know when it's morning? I'll have someone wake you. Now go! <laughs> Without further protest, Aragon slipped through the jostling crowd or group that surrounded Saphira and jumped on her back. What are they going to do? Fucking rip her scales off? <laughs> Quick! They're beggars! Get get on your dragon and fly away before they rip all her scales off! Just like pluck her like a chicken. <laughs> Before she could take off, an old woman stepped forward and grasped Aragon's foot with a fierce grip. He tried to pull away. Her <laughs> hand was like an iron talon around his ankle. She fucking pulled him off that dragon and killed him. <laughs> he could not break her tenacious hold. The burning gray eyes she fixed on him were surrounded by a lifetime's worth of wrinkles. The sk- Everybody has a lifetime's worth of wrinkles. Oh my god. What? <laughs> You're right. The skin was folded in long creases down her sunken cheeks. A tattered bundle rested in the crook of her left arm. Frightened, Aragon asked, What do you want? (laughs) (laughs) Take my baby! (laughs) What do you want? Take my baby! (laughs) No! Take it! (laughs) The woman tilted her arm, and a cloth fell from the bundle, revealing a baby's face. Wow, who could have guessed? (laughs) Hoarse and desperate, she said, The child has no parents. There is no one to care for her but me. And I am weak. Bless her with your power, Argit Lam. Bless her for luck. Oh, I thought she was going to be like, take my baby. Take my baby. (laughs) Aragon was going to be like, I guess I could raise a baby. I raised a dragon. (laughs) He's like, I'm mature enough to raise a child. (laughs) Aragon looked to Oric for help, but the dwarf only watched with a guarded expression. (laughs) The small crowd fell silent, waiting for his response. The women's eyes were still fastened on him. Bless her, Argit Long. Bless her, she insisted. Aragon had never blessed anyone. (laughs) It was not something done lightly in Alagazia, as a blessing could easily go awry, awry, <laughs> as a blessing could easily go awry and prove to be more cursed than boon, especially if it was spoken with ill intent or lack of conviction. Do I dare take that responsibility? He wondered. Bless her, Argit Lamb. Bless her. He has to. Suddenly decided he searched for a phrase or expression to use. Nothing came to mind until, inspired, he thought of the ancient language. This would be a true blessing, spoken with words of power by one of power, myself, a powerful dragon rider. Dick, Jesus. He bent down and tugged the glove off his right hand. (laughs) What? Just fucking. Just fucking this character. What the fuck? Laying his palm on the babe's brow, he intoned. Atra gulia un ilian tother ona un atra ono vice scholar fra rother. The words left him unexpectedly weak, as if he had used magic. He slowly pulled the glove back on. I almost said he almost <laughs> pulled the glove back on the woman. <laughs> he slowly pulled the glove back on and said to the woman, This is all I can do for her. If any words have the power to forestall tragedy, it will be those. Thank you, Argitlam, she whispered. Or, thank you, Argitlam, <laughs> she whispered, bowing slightly. She started to cover the baby again, but Severa snorted and twisted until her head loomed over the child. The woman grew rigid, her breath caught in her chest. Safira lowered her snout and brushed the baby between the eyes with the tip of her nose, then smoothly lifted away. 
A gasp ran through the crowd, for on the child's forehead, where Safira had touched her, was a star-shaped patch of skin as white and silvery as Aragon's Gedway Ignatia. She turned that baby into a dragon rider? <laughs> no, just a human rider. <laughs> the woman stared at Safira with a feverish gaze, wordless thanks in her eyes. Immediately, Safira took flight, battering the awestry- awestruck spectators with the wind from her powerful wing strokes. As the ground dwindled away, Aragon took a deep breath and hugged her neck tightly. What did you do? He asked softly. I gave her hope, and you gave her a future. Would you like to know what Aragon said? That would be fantastic. All right. He said, Atra gulia un ilian tothe. <laughs> he said, Let luck and happiness follow you, and may you be shielded from misfortune. Wow, that was nice. Good job, Aragon. Like, that's actually like a nice thing to say. Loneliness suddenly flowered within Aragon, despite Saphira's presence. Their surroundings were so foreign. I say that weird. Kind of sounds like there was a W in there somewhere. For when. <laughs> Their surroundings were so foreign. It struck him for the first time exactly how far he was from home. A destroyed home, but still where his heart lay. What have I become, Safira? He asked. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's even happened. I mean, like a lot of stuff has happened, but like it's not like he murdered a villain. Okay, let's hear his train of thought. <laughs> I'm only in my first year of manhood, yet I've consulted with the leader of the Varden and pursued by Galbatorix and have traveled with Morzan's son. And no, no mention of Brom, though. Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck Brom, he was useless. <laughs> and now blessings are sought from me. What wisdom can I give people that they haven't already learned? What feats can I achieve that an army couldn't do better? It's insanity. I should be back in Carva Hall with Rorin. Rorin's not in Carva Hall. Safira took a long time to answer, but her words were gentle when they came. A hatchling. That is what you are. A hatchling <laughs> struggling into the world. But Safira, I'm not a dragon. You're not a dragon? <laughs> He's like, you little baby-ass bitch. <laughs> He's like... Wait, I'm older than you. (laughs) I may be younger than you in years, but I am ancient in my thoughts. Like the land. Do not worry about these things. Find peace and where and what you are. People often know what must be done. All you need do, all you need do is show them the way. What fucking cunt. (laughs) All you need do is show them the way. That is wisdom as for feats no army could have given the blessing you did yeah you are (laughs) right thanks for stroking my ego but it was nothing he protested a trifle nay it wasn't nay it wasn't (laughs) what do you sound like a little finger (laughs) that's what Zephyrus starting to sound like nay it wasn't what you saw was the beginning of another story another legend that's so good I hope everyone else thinks that's as good as I do. (laughs) Do you think that child will ever be content to be a tavern keeper or a farmer when her brow is dragon marked and your words hang over her? You underestimate our power and that of fate. Aragon (laughs) bowed his head. It's overwhelming. I feel as if I'm living in an illusion, a dream where all things are possible. Amazing things do happen, I know, but always as someone else, always in some far off place and time. But I, but I found your egg, was tutored by a rider, and dueled a shade. Those can't be the actions of the farm boy I am, or was. Something is changing me. <laughs> <laughs> also, for like a moment, Sephira sounded like she might be a Sith Lord. You underestimate our power. <laughs> you underestimate my power! <laughs> it is your word that shapes you. Word, W-Y-R-D, like fate. It said Safira. Every age needs an icon. Perhaps that lot has fallen to you. Farm boys are not named for the first rider without cause. Your namesake was the beginning, and now you are the continuation, or the end. That's why I chose you, because of your name. Obvious I was ad-libbing. Ah! Said Aragon, <laughs> shaking his head. It's like speaking in riddles. But all this is for... Foreordained. Or, but if all this is foreordained, do our choices mean anything? Or must we just learn to accept our fate? 
Sephira said firmly. Aragon, I chose you from within my egg. You have been given a chance most would die for. Are you unhappy with that? Clear your mind of such thoughts. They cannot be answered and will make you no happier. True, he said glummy, glumly. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All the same, they continue to bounce around within my skull. Just bouncing around. Braun would be like, nothing you else. idiot. There's no <laughs> bouncing around in your skull. There's a brain in there. You know, like, Braun would just be like, you fucking moron. Things have been unsettled ever since Braum died. It has made me uneasy, acknowledged S- Safira, which surprised him because she rarely seemed perturbed. They were above they were above Tronchim now. Aragon looked down through the opening in its peak and saw the floor of the Dragonhold. Isidar Mithrim, the great star sapphire. He knew that beneath it was nothing but Tronchim's great central chamber. Safira descended to the Dragonhold on silent wings. She slipped over its rim and dropped to Isidar Mithrim, landing with the sharp clack of her claws. Won't you scratch it? asked Aragon. I think not. It's no ordinary gem. Aragon slid off her back and slowly turned in a circle, absorbing the unusual sight. <laughs> I just imagine him, like, <laughs> like with his arms out. Just, just like, like, twirling around in a circle. It's a fear being like, what are you doing? She's like, yeah, I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> they were in a round, roofless room, 60 feet high and 60 feet across. The walls were lined with dark openings of caves, which differed in size from grottos, no larger than a man, to a gaping cavern larger than a house. Shiny rungs were set into the marble walls so that people could reach the highest caves. An enormous archway led out of the dragon hold. Aragon examined the great gem under his feet and impulsively lay down on it. He pressed his cheek against the cool <laughs> sapphire, trying to see through it. Distorted lines and wavering spots of color glimmered through the stone, but its thickness made it impossible to discern anything clearly on the floor of the chamber a mile below them. Will I have to sleep apart from you? Sophia shook at her enormous head. No. There is a bed for you in my cave. Come see. You come. You see. <laughs> she sounds like the fucking trash lady from Walking Dead now, <laughs> yeah, all she of a sudden. Does. She turned and, without opening her wings, jumped 20 feet into the air, landing in a medium-sized cave. Her clamber... He clambered up after her. The cave was dark brown on the inside and deeper than he had expected. The roughly chiseled walls gave the impression of a natural formation. Near the far wall was a thick cushion large enough for Sephira to curl up on. Beside it was a bed built into the side of the wall. The cave was lit by a single red lantern equipped with a shutter so its glow could be muted. I like this, said Aragon, and feel safe. Yes, said Sephira, curled up on the cushion watching them. With a sigh, he sank onto the mattress, wariness seeping through him. Sephira, you haven't said much while we've been here. What do you think of Tronchim and Ajihad? We shall see, it seems. Aragon, that we are embroiled in a new type of warfare here. Swords and claws are useless, but words and alliances may have the same effect. The twins dislike us. We should be on our guard for any duplicities they might attempt. Not many of the dwarves trust us. The elves didn't want a human rider, so there will be opposition from them as well. The world is against us, Aragon. We must kill them all. The best thing we can do is to identify those in power and befriend them. And quickly, too. Or else we're fucked. <laughs> do you think it's possible to remain independent of the different leaders? Sephira shuffled her wings into a more comfortable position. Ajahad supports our freedom, but we may be unable to survive without pledging our loyalty to one group or another. We'll soon know either way. Wow. <clears throat> Mandrake Root and Newt's Tongue. Chapter 54. Mandrake Root and Newt's Tongue. <laughs> <laughs> the blankets were bunched underneath Aragon when he woke, but he was still warm. Sephira was asleep on her cushion, her breath coming in steady gusts. For the first time since entering Farthendor, Aragon felt secure and hopeful. He was warm and fed and had been able to sleep as long as he liked. Tension unknotted inside him. Tension that had been accumulating since Brom's death, and even before, since leaving Palancar Valley. I don't have to be afraid anymore. But what about Murtog? No matter the Varden's hospitality, Aragon could not accept it in good conscience, knowing that intentionally or not, he had led Murtog to his imprisonment. Somehow, the situation had to be resolved. His gaze roamed the ga- uh, his gaze roamed the cave's rough ceiling as he thought of Arya. Chiding himself for daydreaming, he tilted his head and looked out at the dragonhold. A large cat sat on the edge of the cave, licking a paw. It glanced at him, and he saw a flash of slanted red eyes. Solemn bum? He asked incredulously. Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> the werecat shook his rough mane and yawned languorously, displaying his long fangs. 
He stretched, then jumped out of the cave, landing with a solid thump in Isidara Mithram. Twenty feet below. Coming? Aragon looked at Saphira. She was awake now, watching him motionlessly. Go. I'll be fine, she murmured. Solombom was waiting for him under the arch that led to the rest of Tronchim. The moment Aragon's feet touched Isidar Mithram, the were-cat, were-cat turned with a flick of his paws and disappeared through the arch. Aragon chased after him, rubbing the sleep from his face. He stepped through the archway and found himself standing at the top of Volturin, the endless staircase. There was nowhere else to go, so he descended to the next level. He stood in an open arcade that curved gently to the left and encircled Tronchim's central chamber. Between the slender columns supporting the arches, Aragon could see Isidar Mithram sparkling brilliant above him, as well as the city's mountain's distant base. If I hear the fucking... If I hear Isidar Mithram one more time, or have to read it, I'm going to lose my mind. It's just, it's too much. The circumference of the central chamber increased with each successive level. The the staircase cut through the arcade's floor to an identical level before and descended through scores of arcades until it disappeared into the distance. The sliding trough, trough ran along the outside curve of the stairs. At the top of Volturin was a pile of leather squares to slide on. To Aragon's right, a dusty corridor led to the level's rooms and apartments. Solomboom padded down the hall, flipping his tail. Wait, said Aragon. He tried to catch up with Solomboom, but Gibson only t- fleetingly in the abandoned passageways. Then, as Aragon rounded a corner, he saw the werecat stop before a door and... Yow! Seemingly of its own accord, the door slid inward. Solomboom slipped inside, then the door shut. Aragon halted in front of the front of it, perplexed. I should have been like... Uh, rounded a corner, saw the werecat stop before a door, and... <laughs> I hope he meows at the door. Aragon? Yeah. <laughs> Sullen bone slipped inside, then the door shut. Aragon halted in front of it, perplexed. He raised his hand to knock, but before he did, the door opened once more, and warm light spilled out. After a moment's indecision, he stepped inside. He entered an earthy two-room suite, lavishly decorated with carved wood and clinging plants. The air was warm fresh and humid. Bright lanterns hung on the walls and from the low ceiling. Piles of intriguing items cluttered the floor, obscuring the corners. A large four-poster bed curtained by even more plants was in the far room. Oof. (laughs) In the center of the main room, on a plush leather chair, sat the fortune teller and witch, Angela. She smiled brightly. What are you doing here? blurted Aragon. (laughs) She's like, I could ask you the same thing. Angela folded her la- hands. Angela folded her hands in her lap. Well, why don't you sit on the floor and I'll tell you. I'd offer you a chair, but I'm sitting on the only one. <laughs> Questions buzzed through Aragon's mind as he settled between two flasks of acrid bubbling green potions. So, exclaimed Angela, leaning forward, you are a writer. I suspected as much, but I didn't know for certain until yesterday. I'm sure Solombum knew, but he never told me. I should have figured it out the moment you mentioned Brom. Safira, I like the name. Fitting for a dragon. Brom's dead, said Aragon abruptly. <laughs> like, damn. <laughs> the Razak killed him. Angela was taken aback. She twirled a lock of her dense curls. I'm sorry. I truly am, she said softly. Aragon smiled bitterly. But not surprised, are you? You foretold his death, after all. I didn't know whose death it would be. She said, shaking her head. But no, I'm not surprised. I met Brom once or twice. He didn't care for my frivolous attitude toward magic. It <laughs> irritated him. Aragon frowned. In tear, you laughed at his fate and said that it was something of a joke. Why? Angela's face tightened momentarily. In retrospect, it was in rather bad taste. But I didn't know what would befall him. How do I put this? Brom was cursed in a way. It was his word to fail at all of his tasks except one, although through no fault of his own. He was chosen as a rider, but his dragon was killed. He loved a woman, but it was his affection that was her undoing. And he was chosen, I assume, to guard and train you, but in the end he failed that as well. The only thing he succeeded at was killing Morzan, and a better deed he couldn't have done. Brom never mentioned a woman to me, retorted Aragon. Angela shrugged carelessly. What are you grabbing me for? It's his fucking mom! Brom never mentioned a woman to me, retorted Aragon. Angela shrugged carelessly. I heard it from one who couldn't have lied. But enough of this talk. 
Life goes on, and we should not trouble the dead with our worries. She scooped a pile of reeds from the floor and deftly started pla plating them together, closing the subject to discussion. Aragon hesitated, then gave in. All right, so why are you in Trondheim instead of Tyrm? Ah, at last, an interesting question, said Angela. After hearing Brom's name again during your visit, I sensed a return of the past in Alagazia. People were whispering that the Empire was hunting a rider. I knew then that the Varden's dragon egg must have hatched, so I closed my shop and set out to learn more. You knew about the egg? Of course I did. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I've been around much longer than you would believe. Very little happens that I don't know about. She paused and concentrated on her weaving. Anyway, I knew I had to go to the Varden as fast as possible. I've been here for nearly a month now, though I really don't care for this place. It's far too musty for my taste, and everyone in Farlandur is so serious and noble. They're probably all doomed to tragic deaths anyway. She gave a long sigh, <sighs> a mocking expression on her face. And the dwarves are just a, just a superstitious bunch of... And the dwarves are just a superstitious bunch of ninnies content to hammer rocks all of their lives. The only redeeming aspect of this place is all the mushrooms and fungi that grow inside Farthendor. Then why stay, said Aragon, smiling. Because I like to be wherever important events are occurring, said Angela, cocking her head. Besides, if I had stayed in Tyrm, Solombone would have left without me, and I enjoy his company. But tell me, what adventures have befallen you since last we talked? For the next hour, Aragon told her everything. God. Aragon summarized his experiences of the last two and a half months. Angela listened quietly, but when he mentioned Murtog's name, she sputtered, Murtog! Aragon nodded. He told me who he is, but let me finish my story before you make any judgments. He continued with his tale. When it was complete, Angela leaned back in her chair thoughtfully. Her reed's forgotten. Without warning, Solombum jumped out of a hiding place and landed on her lap. He crawled up, eyeing Aragon haughtily. Angela patted the werecat. Fascinating. Galbatorix allied with the Urgles, and Murtog finally out in the open. I'd warn you to be careful with Murtog, but you're obviously aware of the danger. Murtog's been a steadfast friend and an unwavering ally, said Aragon firmly. All the same, be careful. Angela paused, then said distastefully, and then there's the matter of the Shade, Durza. I think he's the greatest threat to the Varden right now, aside from Galbatorix. I loathe Shades. They practice the most unholy magic. After necromancy, I'd like to dig his heart out with a dull hairpin and feed it to a pig. Aragon was startled by her sudden vehemence. I don't understand. Brom told me that shades were sorcerers who used spirits to accomplish their will. But why does that make them so evil? Angela shook her head. It doesn't. Ordinary sorcerers are just that. Ordinary. Neither better nor worse than the rest of us. They use their magical strength to control spirits and the spirit's powers. Shades, however, relinquish that control in their search for greater power and allow their bodies to be controlled by spirits. Unfortunately, only the evilest spirits seek to possess humans, and once in scone, they never leave. Such possession can happen by accident if a sorcerer summons a spirit stronger than himself. The problem is, once a shade is created, it's terribly difficult to kill. As I'm sure you know, only two people, Laetri the Elf, and Ernstad, the writer, ever survived that feat. I'm so intrigued by the shade because I thought it was just like a race of like people. It wasn't really explained that it was they were created. That's cool. And it's like actually well thought out. I like it. I'm into it. I've heard the stories. Aragon gestured at the room. But why are you living so high up in Tronchim? Isn't that isn't it inconvenient being this isolated? And how did you get all this stuff up here? <laughs> Angela threw back her head and laughed wryly. Truthfully, I'm in hiding. When I first came to Tronchim, I had a few days of peace until one of those guards who let me into Farthendur blabbed about who I was. Then all the magic users here, though they barely rate the term, pestered me to join their secret group, especially those Drozzle twins who control it. Finally, Drozzle, D-R-A-G-L, J-L? Is that a real word? Is that... Just draw. I don't have any idea. Well, at least you don't know as many words as I don't. It's like Christopher Paolini just like vomited up his vocabulary list. Word salad. Finally, I threatened to turn them the or finally I threatened to turn the lot of them into toads. Excuse me, frogs. But when that didn't deter them, I sneaked up here in the middle of the night. It was less work than you might imagine, especially for one with my skills. 
Did you have to let the twins into your mind before you were allowed into Farthendor? Asked Aragon. I was forced to let them sift from my memories. A cold gleam leapt into Angela's eye. The twins wouldn't dare probe me, for fear of what I might do to them. Oh, they'd love to, but they know the effort would leave them broken and gibbering nonsense. I've been coming here long before the Varden began examining people's minds, and they're not about to start on me now. She peered into the other room and said, Well, this has been an enlightening talk, but I'm afraid you have to go now. My brew of mandrake root and Newt's tongue is about to boil, and it needs attending. Do come back again when you have the time, and please don't tell anyone that I'm here. I'd hate to move again. It would make me very irritated. And you don't want to see me irritated. I'll keep your secret, assured Aragon, getting up. Solomon jumped off Angela's lap as she stood. Good, she exclaimed. Aragon said farewell and left the room. Solomon guided him back to the dragon hold, then dismissed him with a twitch of his tail before sauntering away. I think I don't like it when the characters like flex. You don't want to see me irritated. It just seems. This is funny. It's Angela just being stupid and funny. I guess maybe but also serious. But like maybe it's the way like I don't know maybe just it. the tone that you read it in. It just seems like like the Hulk or something. Like you don't want to see me angry. Like I don't know. It just seems a little cheesy. I think she's just joking around, oh. just having a good laugh, but also being serious. Like. Oh, you don't want to see me irritated. I get it. Like, <laughs> it'll be really irritating. <clears throat> but you don't want to see me irritated. Hmm. I don't know. It just seems weird for me. Cool. Um. So, here's the deal. Brom is Aragorn's dad. And... Murtog and Aragon share a mom. So now this is an evolving theory? Obviously. Okay. Would you have expected any less? Would you expected me just to have been like hard Siri at the beginning of this book and that's it? Yeah, no new information stand, can change anything. Expected you to stand resolute in your theory. Because nah. you felt so confident about it. I still think they're brothers. I still think they share I mean, that's, a mom. That's not what your original theory was. If you're forgetting, I'm not forgetting. Your original theory was just that Morazan was both of their father. They're still brothers, though. <laughs> <laughs> they at least share one parent, and I think it's their mom. Interesting. Because remember when I said I do love Scandal, what if, because she actually loved Braum, she, I'm just saying, like, I guess it would still be like infidelity, but with someone that she loved previously that Morzan had stolen her away from, maybe Morzan put her under like a spell, like a, you know, maybe these are all just puzzle pieces and the truth won't be revealed. Ever because maybe we got a whole Star Wars scenario going on here where you just find out Aragon's parents are junkers. No. 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 <laughs> That's just ugh, lame. I don't want that. Don't. <laughs> You're just going to break my heart. I'm not breaking anybody's heart. I didn't write the books. The author is dead. <clears throat> He's disconnected from his work. Because how long do you think it's going to take for Aragon to start putting together these puzzle pieces that are laid in front oh, of him? He'll never fucking these do it. These obvious <laughs> puzzle pieces that are being laid. I feel like he's going to need one... There's going to be, like, one thing that just, like, triggers it for him. Like, Murtaugh's going to be You like, said it. You said that one thing. You're like, I just need. I just need. Remember? I. You're like. <laughs> I say a lot of things. You're like, I just need Murtaugh's mom's name. That's all I need. And yeah, I got that's it together. What I'm saying. <laughs> so. You think it might come up in conversation and then Aragon's going to put it all together and have this grandiose 
idea of his lineage and heritage and then it won't be real like it'll be he's just a farm boy i mean he is a farm boy well was a farm boy now yeah but like he doesn't have like any like grandiose like lineage that he came from what are you trying to say i'm just trying to draw the parallel between aragon the very first writer which was like a nobody and no. aragon this writer oh no oh oh no is it gonna rhyme is that what you're telling me it's like poetry and it rhymes i don't know oh am i i mean i get it and i appreciate it but it's not as fun as putting all these pieces together <laughs> or am i misleading you i don't know I don't know what to do anymore. You're tearing me Did this Did you read way. the one comment that was like, oh, like, Demi's putting puzzle pieces together. Get ready for the flip. No. Stop. No. No, no, no. It was pretty deep down in the, con- in the comments, so he probably didn't see it. You sure? It th- was it the one that said the switch and bait? Bait and switch. Wait, how does that the go? The old switcheroo. The old switcheroo. <clears throat> He's actually Murtaugh's dad. He's actually Murtaugh's <laughs> son. <laughs> uh, or what if Angela is his mom? That's not his mom's name. Oh, yeah. His mom's name's <laughs> Selena well, maybe, Gomez or something. Well, maybe Angela is not, that's not her real name. What if Angela is his mom and she's a switcher name? You'd think... I don't know. I'm just like, spitballing shit now. Because I was going to say, that doesn't really make sense. Because you would think that she would know that Aragon was her son. You know? Well, but she could be hiding it from him. Yeah, but why? I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that one. <laughs> No, I don't like that one. That one's stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it was pretty dumb. I'm trying to think, like, of all, like, all the characters that we know of, I feel like it's, his parentage isn't going to be someone that we haven't met yet. I don't feel like it is going to be like that. I feel like it's going to be someone we've, like, met or heard of. Sloan. (laughs) (laughs) That's why it was such a shit head to yeah. Aragon. <sighs> I don't know now. I don't know what I know. What I want to know. I don't know anything. The Razak. He's a Razak kid. They're not even human. They... Do they even have genitals? It's like, nose? oh, big reveal. He's actually Garrow's real son. They're not cousins. I'd be like, what the fuck? Why? And like, his mom was never ever his mom. It was all just a cover and a ruse. I would literally make that face if that was the reveal. The girl was his dad. I'd be like, this is awful. Selena. (laughs) Selena Gomez. Selena Gomez. Every time I think of Selena, I always think of, um, Selena, like, um, the Texas singer yeah. that everyone is, like, in love with. Yeah. Okay. Is that all you got? <sighs> yeah, since you've ruined everything. So, Angela is in Tron Team now. Kind of cool how she just can show up there. It's interesting. It's almost like she's someone of power. Yeah. And of trust. Hmm. Interesting. Or maybe just strictly a power because, like, the twins wouldn't dare read her mind, so. Yeah, and they're pretty icky guys. Well, they're pretty, like, assholes, so they'd be like, no, we need to look into your mind unless she's like, I'll fucking literally kill you with my mind. (laughs) 
And then they're like, okay, you're too powerful, so we'll just let you through then. Like, Galbatorix could just come walking through, I guess, if you wanted to. <laughs> I mean, why not? What are the twins going to do? Also, I hate that they're called, like, the twins. <laughs> why? <laughs> I don't know why, but it, like, grosses me out. Because I don't feel like they're twins. Like, I don't feel like they're twin brothers. No, they are. At least they appear as if to be twin brothers. I don't believe it. One just likes to hide behind a stair, the stairs. It's fucking weird. They're just so weird. And the other one just walks around. I don't like the looks of them. Twinning it up. You got anything else? No. Cool. You ready? Comments. 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 You ready? Yeah. My first comment is from Nathaniel Kiefer. Nathaniel said, to add fuel to Demi's theory fire, what if the reason Murtaugh can shield his mind so well is because he knows that Aragon is his brother, so in order to protect him, he prevents the others, like the twins, from probing in his mind and finding out. Like a big brother-little brother relationship protecting Aragon from the scorn and hatred that Murtaugh received from the Varden. I almost said Vartog. <laughs> Stop. Also, as much as I love this series, I've always thought the pace of the first one seems to really dragon, like drag on. Drag on, dragon, Aragon, if you replace the E <laughs> in Aragon with a D, it says dragon. But, uh, um, I think that would be very interesting if they were brothers and Murtaugh knew they were brothers. How would he know? I don't know. Maybe they were, I don't know. Maybe his mom told him. Maybe him and his mom were close. And she was like, you have a brother. Shh. <laughs> his name is Aragon. Shh. And he's like, okay. three-year-old. <laughs> like, okay. Dude, I don't know. I have a brother. Wait, when did his mom disappear? <laughs> How old was he? He like, was three and he lost both of his parents. He was like, when his mom like went away and then came back. He was like four or five at this point because mm -hmm. he got a scar when he was three and then that's when M morizan would have died mm -hmm. had to have been like right around there and so his mother would have disappeared when he was like four or five three four or five and then if she was i think it's really in your suspicious. theory if she was pregnant with little baby aragon and she fled then it would have been nine months so he would have had to have been like four or five when she came back and then died. So he's so then he would be like four or five years older than Aragon. But we know with that timeline that's not true. We know to that timeline that we pulled up, he's like two years older than Aragon, two or three. But then also, I guess to like put a little bit of fire on your <laughs> theory, that timeline wasn't a hundred percent accurate because it said Morzan died at Murtaugh's second year of life. Yeah. So. I'm just saying. And Murtaugh in the book said himself he was three when he received the cut. Right. So. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, um, I really like um, the addition to my theory fire. Of course Maybe. you do. Of course I do. Just keep stoking that fire, baby. Am I going to be like upset? You, you can't tell me that. You can't tell me anything. I just don't want to be like... Are we getting sucked up in a tornado? Just <laughs> 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 the land of Oz. Um, That'd be an interesting vlog. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I just don't want to be like upset. Like, I don't want to like find out and be upset. Like, if his fucking parents were junkers, I would be upset. Because I was like, ooh, look at this cool thing. That'd be really cool and like a cool thing. It's so cool. And then he's like, yeah. so cool. And there his parents are junkers. I don't like that. So I'm keeping with the Murtaugh and Aragon are brothers thing. I Thank mean, you, Nathaniel. <laughs> if your theory is wrong, you can just remember it your way. <laughs> what? What do you? I don't even want to know what that means. Like, if your theory ends up being wrong, mm -hmm. you can just remember the story however you want to remember it. It's, yeah, they are brothers in my mind. Like how I remember Brahm's death being more epic. <laughs> okay. I'll allow it. Excuse me. Um, thank you, Nathaniel. 
My next comment is from Nate Perkins. Nate Perkins said, first, I am super excited about Demi's reactions and ideas. I can't wait for the bait and switch um, that happens later in in a later book. You know what I mean, dead. Great. I'm sure other people do. I know what you mean. I hate that shit. Also, for books you should read, Earthsea, it swaps protagonists and if it's very interesting. Also, the bald man seems pretty slimy, so fuck him. And then Demi, why can't they be brothers and lovers? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I can't wait for Demi to watch this and the next books. So as much as I Have would... Have you ever heard of brotherly love? Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> is like This is a young adult book, so I'm not expecting that. But if it were in Game of Thrones, I would be like, fair game. True. Okay. <laughs> Solid point. <laughs> um, but I feel like people keep like sprinkling like. Yeah, people be careful. You're going to put some spoilers down there. But like at least like this, like, ooh, the bait and switch or like, ooh, like I feel like it's at least it's not giving too much away. But I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm excited about it. Okay. Um, thank you, Nate Perkins. And then my next comment is from Diana Thice. Diana said, Brom couldn't leave a journal because he wouldn't want it in the wrong hands. Yeah, that's a good point. And I thought that was a really fair point because I was like, that's so stupid. Why wouldn't he have kept a journal? Like, it makes sense for, like, I feel like magic practitioners or somebody in that kind of line of work. I don't know. It's like journal things. But I guess it makes sense when you're that magic high. magically imbued it with dragon's blood so that only dragons could read it. Oh my god! <gasps> Maybe he just went to Safira's brain and it's just he zooped it over there. He transferred his consciousness into <laughs> no! Safira, into Safira's brain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like the knowledge. <laughs> That's why she said, "I have ancient knowledge." It's Brahms' knowledge. Not an official theory. <laughs> um, but thank you, Diana. That is a very good point because I was like really upset about that. I like the idea that he transferred his consciousness <laughs> to Safira. Stop. He didn't tran this isn't Soma, okay? No one's transferring consciousness. Uh, my last comment is from Thomas Gowan. Thomas said, you guys should try a few unknown books. For example, read a chapter and hit the vote button if you want to hear more. That's a good idea. I thought that was a really good idea. Give some people that haven't heard of a book before the chance to be like, yeah, sure, I might like that shit. Yeah. P.S. <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine that you said that. Um, P.S. I love the blackboard idea. Loyal Fiend fan even listen to that abomination cursed child crap. LOL. Oh, shit. That is loyal. Thank That's you. Like OG. And I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry you had just to listen to that. Think of it as a fanfic. Just think of it as trash that never very happened very mediocre fanfic <clears throat> thank you for thank your comment you. thank you for sticking with us even yeah. through trash <laughs> my turn i got a nice long hard comment from jdp <laughs> <laughs> what Just. jdpc said okay for once i have a few things to say he has been res relatively quiet on the Aragon series that in re relation, in comparison to Harry Potter. So, first, is Saphira a dragon or what? <laughs> been a couple time, or been a couple time of in this book that she is fighting enemies, and we have yet to see her shot fire. This one time, I was like, okay, that's it. When he described the smoke coming from her nose. Also, are dragons in this world made in China? Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure that. Because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that normal arrows wouldn't wound her, even pierce her wings. Once again, CP and me don't have the same vision of dragon epicness. Also, like Demi said, finally we have some backstory. I have a hard time caring about any character since the start of the book, since I don't really relate to any of them. With Harry, you can relate to him because he is a kid going to school, which I did too. Mine was boring, <laughs> and his is awesome. Harry is a blank slate, to which you can feel you are at Hogwarts. His backstory isn't what makes you relate to him, but here, as much as I love medieval fantasy, I feel the characters aren't really fleshed out. Hell, I know I compare this too much with Game of Thrones, but in Game of Thrones, you fucking know the backstory of people you, who are dead for hundreds of years. <laughs> GRR is kind of the opposite and would tell you the story of the guy who forgets the horseshoe of Jon Snow's horse if you had to know him for three pages. When you finished the last chapter, I was like, 
who is Morzan? I remember the name, but that's about it. Probably me, or probably me that didn't listen as well as I should, but maybe that I wasn't going to remember one name and a little backstory it came from when I don't know much about the main character. Well, I must say I kind of get lost in all those names and terms he created. Razak, Varden. It comes to me not having the book in my, front of my eyes, I guess. Yeah, that's why... Uh, well, let me finish this. Well, I do hope Demi has read about a prediction. That would be something unpredictable and said. Finally, I haven't read Twilight, but I love the comparative of to Potter. I read one day, Harry Potter is a series about a kid learning to become a man and fight adversary adversity, while Twilight is a series about girls who doesn't know who to choose between her two high school crush. Just to talk about like how it is kind of hard in some parts when I'm like talking about like Varden, Razak, and when I'm just saying like random words like Tuniver's Nectar and the skilled mm-hmm. Nurbra. That's why I started adding like in the couple episodes ago, like I started adding mm-hmm. it up here, the ancient language and then what it means behind my head and the dwarf language, what it means. And then just like any other words that are just kind of like out there. Because like when I say skilled in the bra, like what the fuck is that? <laughs> actually, that's too much. I actually don't remember in, out of context. It was the poison they administered to Arya. Shit. You right. Um, and the also, tune of her nectar was the antidote. Um, also, something else that I found like kind of annoying was the fact that, like, to me, maybe just personally, but like Razak and Zarok, like words are like too similar. Ra, Zach, Zer, Ok. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, some stuff is just like it's too similar, and it gets Sapphira, like Sapphira, Sapphire. Okay, well, that's because she's blue, but... Um, I get it. I don't know. I'm just saying. The words are, like, big, and they're confusing, and I appreciate that he made his own language sound, like, specific to his story, but because I'm not familiar with, like, those types of, like, made-up words, like, I've played games before that are, like, set in the medieval times with, like, elven names and shit, but, like, these names are just, like... The words and the names, it's too much. I'm not familiar. It's, like, so out of left field. So it's, like, hard to, like, Yeah, if hear. you're not reading them, it totally is. But when you read them, you're like, okay. Yeah. Might also just be the way I'm pronouncing them, so whatever. Immortal RC said, Brahm never said you die if you tell a lie in the ancient language. You cannot speak something you know is untrue. The words won't come if you try to lie. Oh, I could have sworn he said that you would die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was mistaken on that. That but is interesting. I appreciate the correction. That is interesting, though, that you just, like, the words just, like, won't come to you. Yeah, like, I can't be, like, like liar, sentient. liar. You know, like, where he's mm-hmm. trying to say the pen is green or whatever, but it's blue. Mm-hmm. So if you were trying to just, like, say the pen is green, then you'd be like, the pen is... The pen is pen. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The pen is pen. <laughs> Fairy Wing said, I think Murtaugh is definitely hiding something. He would rather die than have his mind probed or scanned. <laughs> it seems extreme for someone to rather die than have their privacy invaded. There's got to be a reason he's willing to die for this. See, I agree with that. Like, there's something, like, I feel like there's a bunch of stuff, like, just underneath the surface. Like, Murtog just fucking knows everything. Yeah, like, that him and Aragon are brothers. I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. But, like, I don't know. There's just, like, a lot of stuff, like, right under the surface right now. It was just, like, all of the sudden, all of the sudden, all of a sudden, it was just, like, bing, bang, boom. Like, we have a story. Bing, bang, boom. (laughs) And then, like, now I'm, like, oh, shit. I've just spent this whole book not knowing anything. And now I get, like, a little taste of something. And now I just still don't know anything. And it's, I'm very, like. I understand how people just, like, don't put down books. This is why. Especially the last half of this book. You just... I couldn't put down. I think I could put down, like, the first part of it. But then, after halfway mark... (laughs) I mean, you know, I definitely put it down. (laughs) Yeah. Like, the first couple chapters. So, that's uh, all I have for comments. I do have a couple things I want to talk about. As far as the channel goes. One. See everybody recommending books. So, I think... I'm going to try to do this thing for the next series, like three, four books in the future now, but for when we read the next series or when we finally like vote for the next series, I'm going to try to find a way to do it 
but where everybody can submit mm-hmm. like all of their their um, book series that they want to be read into just like one like Excel sheet or something. Mm-hmm. And so everybody can submit like any book series that you want to be read. And then so there'll be like a submission period mm-hmm. and then there'll be a voting period. And then whichever series in the list gets like most read or whatever. Or we could have like a bracket system Mm -hmm. because like we'll know like far ahead of time when we're approximately going to finish the Aragon series. Right. So we can start the voting process like pretty far in advance. Probably like once we start the last book, we could start the voting process and then we could do like a bracket system like fantasy football. Yeah. But like a bracket system where they like go against each other with votes Mm -hmm. and then we just like we like windle them down windle them down the bracket system whittle them down that's yeah, the i was gonna say i don't think windle <laughs> is, i make like up words whatever your child that you don't like <laughs> windle okay so <laughs> or pikel <laughs> and then also talking about the theory board we are getting a theory board a demi's theory board it's gonna go right here it's gonna be huge <laughs> It's going to be black and huge. Ooh. It's going to be one of those glass ones or whatever. And then it's going to be there. <laughs> wow. It's going to be fucking lit, fam. I'm excited to write my theories I think up that'll there. be fun. I hope it doesn't like... Eh, it shouldn't look weird. I was going to say, I hope it doesn't like look like it's all weird and angled, but the camera's pretty much straight on, so... I think it'll look good. I'm excited. So, yeah. If you guys like the video, you guys know what to do. And we will see you in the next one. Excited to get the, I think it'll be fun to like write down your theories and. So I can keep them straight. Cause I remember there was a point in Harry Potter when like. You had so many fucking I had theories. so many things I said that I'm like, I don't even remember. Yeah. And then like when I'm reading, then you can just like hop up out of your chair and write something on the theory board. Ooh. And-